Welcome to Defeat Your Cravings, hosted by Dr. Glenn Livingston, Ph.D. Glenn has held his doctorate in psychology for more than 30 years and is also a former multi-million dollar consultant to the big food industry and uses his experience to help you defeat your cravings. This show will help you to focus on dramatically reducing cravings and leave the diet mentality behind so you can more easily and effortlessly achieve your health, fitness, and body composition goals. Please remember, no doctor-patient relationship is created via this show, and you are responsible for confirming any changes to your diet, health, or psychological routines with an appropriately licensed professional before implementing them. Now, before we get started, if you haven't yet downloaded the free smartphone app to access dozens of these recordings all in one place, as well as to avail yourself of a confidential community for support, motivation, and assistance, please visit the podcast link on DefeatYourCravings.com as soon as possible. And now, here's your host, Dr. Glenn Livingston. Hey, it's the very good Dr. Glenn Livingston with DefeatYourCravings.com here with a kind-hearted woman named Jessie, who has agreed to share her experience and strength and hope and wisdom, as well as her trials and tribulations and stumbles and falls, so you can all benefit from it. Right, Jessie? I also have a treat for you today. I have all of my master coaches with me. So I've got Amy and Fiona and Yvonne here as well. And we're going to give you the full power of the Brain Trust to help you with whatever you'd like help with. So, Jesse, why don't you fill me in a little bit about your food struggles? Tell me where you are now and where you'd like to be where we can help. Sure. I've never really been a dieter. So, you know, I never had any weight issues until two children and then also being on some medication that one of the things that happens is after I take it, my inhibitions are lower. It makes me sleepy. And so I'd gotten into a very bad habit of some night binging. You know, also just in general, being more sedentary, having more kid food around that I was eating too often. But the night binging had been going on for a couple of years and really was something that that felt like it was sort of out of my control. So when I first started the program, I said, you know, I'm going to make three rules. One is to help me stop the night binging. I want to cut way back on sweets and then stop eating from my kids' meals. And so that's how I started out. I realized after a while that I felt like I really needed to focus on one at a time. So I really focused on the night binging and it probably took me almost two months, but I have stopped that. And so it's been almost a month with just one binge. And so I'm super proud and grateful for that. So now I'm turning to my other food rules. The one that I'm trying to attack now is cutting way back on sweets. And, you know, I have a specific rule around that. What is that rule? I can have one of a very boring list of, you know, 100 calorie sweets a day. And then once a week, I can have a small portion of something else. And the danger part of the day for me is around, you know, it used to be the night thing, but now it's around dinner time. And, you know, I'm making dinner for the kids. So there's kid food in front of me. And then after dinner, I find myself really, really wanting something sweet. And, you know, the reason I picked the three sweets I could have is that they're not that exciting. So often I say, well, I'll just have this other thing that's, you know, oh, that's just 200 calories. And and again, I, I feel like I do really well during the day. And then it's always that that time of day that I really kind of stumble with. Do you have a rule about not eating your kids' stuff? So that is the next rule that I'm, well, I would say that's the next guideline that I'm practicing right now. It's a guideline. And what's the guideline, that you don't eat your kids' food? Well, really that I don't eat for my kids' meals. And that's where you're getting these 200-calorie bursts? No. So normally, you know, again, I'm, I'm allowed to have a little 100-calorie kind bar or a popsicle, but I often find myself taking 100 or 200-calorie sweet from my kids' food. That kind of sets me up for, oh, you know, it's just 100 calories here. And I just find myself eating probably a few hundred extra calories a day, and, and so then I'm not losing weight. And then the squeals are, you know, okay, well, you're not losing weight, so what's another 100 calories? <laughs> That's the primary difficulty that you're struggling with now, is that you're taking from your kids' meals and that takes you over the um, 100 calories. Yeah. But you want to have that as a guideline rather than a rule? Well, so it's two separate right now. One is the sweets, 
which is the rule that I'm working on right now, which is that I can just have one from a list of three hundred calorie sweets a day. But I'm finding myself more often picking from different sweets that are not that much more calories, but not in that list. You're breaking the rule. Yes. One of the places you might break it is with your kids' meals, but basically you're breaking the rule. Yes. Yvonne, Fiona, Amy, any? Yeah. Can I ask a question about that rule? Sure. It sounds like you picked three things that you don't particularly like. Is that true? (laughs) I don't dislike them. They're just not as exciting as the other options. Well, are there other 100 calorie options or half of a 200 calorie thing that would be more exciting that might satisfy you so you don't have to break the rule? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, part of the reason I picked them is because of Glenn said about if it's too good, it's no good. And so I find myself when I it's a little piece of chocolate, then, you know, it makes me want to eat more sweets. So I would like to stick to the less exciting sweets, but I'm just getting hung up on that right now. And now your pig is saying, that wasn't enough. Let's have something else. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. Fiona, Yvonne, any questions about her rule? Yeah, yeah, that was my question. Why choose foods that are boring? Because I find when I eat things that are a lot sweeter, then, then I just get more cravings. Got it. Is there something that you could have that wasn't so boring, but wasn't necessarily as sweet as chocolate? Um, I mean, I've given myself a couple different options. I mean, again, there are things that I enjoy. Part of my issue is that I'm in a house with two little boys and also with a husband who doesn't really gain that much weight. And so there are sweets around that are exciting. (laughs) I was able to do this with the night eating. And so I know that I can do it. I'm just having a hard time getting over that hump. You know, I have a good day and then I'll have a bad day. Have you ever given up sweets before? No. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say congratulations on eradicating that nighttime binging. I know it was a struggle for you, but you have done really well. You've got a great, great evidence of success. I think that you can do this too. I'm looking forward to hearing, you know, how this, this session goes. Do we all think that Jesse has the right rule, given what she's saying? Yeah, it's the rule she wants. So yeah. yeah, I think it's important to her. And maybe, you know, could there be a tweak to the rule? Maybe, I don't know. But I, I understand the reasoning behind the rule. And it sounds like it's really important to her. What would the tweak that you would consider be to the rule? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So, Jesse, what would it mean to you if you could 100% comply with this rule? Only one of 100 calorie approved sweets per day. If you could 100% comply with that for a month, what, what would it mean to you? I think my cravings for sugar would probably go way down. You know, I'm committed to making small changes that I'm, I'm hoping will add up to bigger changes. And so I'm hoping that the more of these changes I make, that I'll start losing weight. And I think that that will give me more momentum to keep making changes. So you'd have a positive snowball on your weight loss. You'd be less tortured by cravings. What, what else might be better in a month? Um, you know, I think if I ate less sweets than I would be and then could continue to eat less of my kids' meal food. And I think, again, if I eliminated those three really negative habits that I had, that I really would start to lose weight. I was, you know, always a person that was at a good weight and... I know how to eat healthy, but I've just developed some bad habits and I live in a house that there's some some slop around all the time. Absolutely. Why would it be good to be back at your healthy weight? Why would that be important? So both health-wise, my doctor is really wanting me to lose some weight and I don't feel good at the weight that I am. What doesn't feel good? The way I look, I think I would love my kids to see me as a healthier person at a healthier weight. I would feel a lot more confident about my health. I would feel like I could wear nicer clothes. So, you know, so it's really a mix of health and then confidence. And I get the impression about you that you're you're someone who accomplishes things. I am. Yeah. And I've felt stuck with this for a long time and that's been tough on my confidence. The last question I have is why would it be good to be free of the sugar cravings? I think it would help with me just to be a healthier eater in general. Sugar has always been what I binge on. And so I think if I had less sugar cravings, I just wouldn't really binge. Okay. 
what would happen if you allowed this to just go on, if you didn't work on this habit and you just allowed yourself to kind of sneak and break the rule a little here, a little there? Yeah, I think, you know, I would probably continue to gain weight and my health measures would get worse. You know, I already have high triglycerides. So, you know, my, I'm relatively young. My doctor is not putting me on medication yet, but really would like me to make some lifestyle choices that we're hoping would get me back in a healthy range. Sure. Would you like to recommit to the rule? Yes. Do any of my master coaches have any other questions about Jesse's motivation? I have a question, not about the motivation, but Jesse, do you always have the sweets at the same time every day? Pretty much, yeah. It's always been after dinner. One thing that I'm trying to experiment with, not all that successfully yet, was waiting an hour until after dinner because I felt like after dinner was when I just wanted to shove something in my mouth. And so I felt like it would help to wait an hour or so before I had that sweet. You know, if you always have it at the same time every day and it's a problem to stick to that particular sweet, then maybe if you had it at a different time of day or even an hour later, even maybe in the afternoon or, or some other point in the day, it would be, you know, as if starting to address the habit of, of eating at the same time of day and, and not sticking to that rule. What do you think? I think right now my habit and, and you know, I like having a little thing to look forward to later in the day. I think I could probably change that. Does it say in the rule that it has to be at a certain time? No. No. Right. So just a suggestion. Without any pressure, you could experiment with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know where whole fruit fits in your dietary philosophy, but have you tried adding whole fruit at the end of your meal? Not to take away from the treat, but to add to your meal. Yeah, I eat a lot of whole fruit and sometimes I do do that after a meal. Yeah, I think that's helpful. That's part of the sweet taste. I end up eating a lot of fruit because I, I like sweets. Should we give Jesse's pig a chance? Jesse, can we give your pig a chance? Sure. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to expose it. We're going to put it on the table and we're going to... See what it's oh, okay. to see. We're going to tease it a little bit as if we're really going to listen, but then we're going to disempower all of its thoughts. But why does the pig say that you can't do this, you won't do this, or you, you, know, you shouldn't do this? Just that it's too hard, I guess, that I just love sweets and it would feel sad <laughs> if I couldn't have them anymore. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of vices, I'm not a drinker, and I have a full-time job and two little kids. And so I think this has always felt like the way that you know, I feel a little better. Or it, you get that sort of hit of sugar and, and you just feel a little relaxed. So you have a lot of vices. You can't take away this last one. Right. What else? That it feels too hard, that there's always sugar around, that I like it so much. Um, I don't know, that it would take pleasure away from some things, you know, ice cream in the summer. And I guess those are probably the biggest ones. Okay. Anything else? And then I guess also, what difference will it really make? I have so much weight to lose. I don't know that it'll really make that much of a difference. Why else? I think those are probably the main ones. If we assume that the pig wins by telling us a half-truth with a bigger lie, help me analyze and figure out what's wrong with its logic. So it says it's too hard and it would feel too sad not to have sugar anymore. So therefore, you shouldn't commit to this rule. You shouldn't stick to this rule. What's the problem with that? Well, it's going to feel too hard and too sad long term if my health is bad. It's going to be harder and sadder long term, right? Yeah. Jesse, the pig is sad. The pig is sad, not me, right? <laughs> right. You don't have a lot of vices. You can't possibly take away your last one. What's wrong with that way of thinking? Well, if it's a vice that's harming my health, then it's not serving me. Where are you going to get your pleasure from? I mean, I get pleasure from my life, but it's a busy, a busy life. And so I think just having a sweet feels like an easy way to feel a little better. Not that I feel bad. You know, I'm, a, I'm generally a, a calm, happy person, but I'm a busy, stressed, working mom. Is there any place that you could add pleasure to your life while you're going through this extinction curve? Non-food pleasure. Yeah, I'm trying to get more active. I mean, that's not <laughs> pleasurable right now. <laughs> um, you mean when you do some more exercise, you'd, but you don't find that pleasurable right now? Yeah, I mean, it's not pleasurable, but not in the same category. 
where you're going to get more pleasure from your life. Some where you could take a break during the day, some memories you could retrieve, some people you could talk to. Yeah, I've been trying to um, connect with friends a little bit more. I mean, even just, you know, watching a little bit of TV after my kids go to bed. So you can indulge in some of those things, especially for a month or so while you're getting through the extinction curve. Yeah. Sugar is ubiquitous. It's always around me. It's always around you. So you can't resist it. What's wrong with that line of thinking? Well, I think I haven't resisted it yet. So right now I don't really have evidence that I can, but I'm a person who has accomplished a lot of things in my life and overcome a lot of things that were hard. And that's the human learning process is that you can't until you can, right? Right. People fall down and get up until they stay up. Yeah. And the night binging felt really beyond my control. And, you know, in a fairly short amount of time, I've really turned that around. Terrific. It would take too much pleasure away from certain life events, like having ice cream in the summer. You can't enjoy the summer without ice cream. What's wrong with that? Well, my rule right now gives me one a week. So I could still have a small portion of ice cream in the summer once a week, and that would be plenty. Okay. So that is just complete BS, right? Yep. What difference will it really make? You've got so much to lose, so don't bother. What's wrong with that way of thinking? It's not just weight loss. My triglycerides are the biggest concern right now, and it would definitely help with that. And I think that small changes would add up to slow weight loss, but that's the best way to do it anyway. You know my triglycerides were once over a 1,000. Did I ever tell you that? No. That was no fun. Came down pretty quickly when I stopped binging. The other thing that occurs to me here, if I may, is that gaining weight would make a difference for sure, right? Yes. If you kept eating sugar, then you're likely to gain weight. If you're in a hole, you got to stop digging. Right. Well, how confident are you that you're um, only going to have one hundred calorie approved sweet per calendar day, and you have your one treat on the weekend? I am not sure how to get. <laughs> really confident about that. That's okay. I'm asking you for an honest <laughs> answer. So if you give me a number, a percentage, what would that be? Uh, maybe a six. A six out of 10 or six out of a thousand? <laughs> six out of 10. Okay. So there must be either one of these squeals or some other squeal that's still bothering you. I picked up on a squeal, Glenn. Yeah? There was a squeal that says that Jesse needs a hit of sugar to relax. Again, it's that one time of day. Most of the day now, I'm really fine. It's that one where I feel like I lose my mind a little bit. And that and that used to be after bedtime, and it's not anymore. And it's not nearly as bad as it was after bedtime. But again, I do my refutations, and I feel really good during the day. And then there's always that one period where it's like, oh, just put that in your mouth. <laughs> like, <laughs> and do you need that hit at that point to relax? Is that the only way to relax, by getting a hit of sugar? Or a hit of anything? I think it's partially just a habit. I don't know that it really helps me to relax. I don't know. It's like a really bad habit that I'm having a hard time breaking. And it's at the same time every day. Can you explain what that looks like, what's going on at that time? Well, yeah. So I could say that dinner time is not usually relaxing because my kids are being a pain and I'm, you know, I've just made dinner and then they're being a pain. <laughs> You know, nothing horrible, just like normal kids. And so then after dinner, I'm cleaning up and, you know, and that's when they have their sweet after dinner. Yeah. So I would say that it's a time of day where I'm a little depleted and and also in the kitchen where all the food is. And so I would say that those are all kind of factors. Glenn, could you talk about your operant conditioning of anxiety? How about you talk about my operant condition of anxiety? (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well, I wanted Glenn to say that if you train your body to be anxious every day during that time so that it gets its hit. And so that in a way, having the hit reinforces being anxious every day at that time. And once you're able to get over that, you feel less restless is the theory. Mm -hmm. So your body has learned that producing anxiety at that point results in the acquisition of the sugar. Yeah, I think that's true. And it just sort of overrides my thinking brain. In that way, the sugar might be making you more anxious at that time, not less anxious, even though it feels less anxious at the moment. Right. So which of these squeals is making you still feel less than confident, less than 100% confident? 
I really do feel like it's, it's just been so hard to break. You couldn't do it in the past, so you'll never be able to do it in the future. Too many years of struggles up to this point, so you can't possibly do it in the future. Could you do it for 72 hours? That was helpful with the night binging when Yvonne and I realized that I was breaking it every five days. And so then on day five, I really focused a lot because I knew that probably the cravings were going to be the worst then. And that was kind of what got me over the hump. Short-term goal and really, really focusing intensely on that. So how confident would you be that you could do this for 72 hours? I'm trying to figure out how many, how many days 72 hours is. <laughs> how many days it usually is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do it for 72 hours. How confident are you? Uh, I'm confident. If I took my niece that I love very much and I put her in a cage with a big knife over her head, and if you ate sugar between now and the next 72 hours, it would fall, would she be safe? Yes. Okay. Sarah, please don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Sarah. Okay, good. Are there any other squeals that are still bothering you? Uh, I don't think so. Do you have any questions or concerns? No. I have an impression that might help you, or maybe not. I have the impression that you're not sure if you deserve to have the pleasure break in other ways. I have the impression you're taking care of a lot of things and a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. Would you be willing to keep that in mind and make an extra effort, especially as the days wear on, to try to do that? I think it's important. Yeah. Amy, Fiona, Yvonne, is there anything that you want to add? You hit on it, Jesse, that you did what you could to get yourself to that three-day mark with the nighttime or five-day mark with the nighttime binging. And I think you've got a handle on the idea, too, that these little steps are going to create long-term benefits for you when it comes to breaking this habit, you know, breaking your rule every day. Yeah. And I felt like once I got to the five days, then then it was another five days. And then once I got to the 10 days, it felt like, well, boy, now I don't want to mess up because it's been so many days. And how does it feel now? feels great. I feel really just relieved and proud of myself. That's probably what's going to happen here too. Yeah. Do you have any questions or concerns? Uh, no. And that brings us to the end of today's broadcast of Defeat Your Cravings, hosted by Dr. Glenn Livingston. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the products and services Dr. Glenn offers to help you dramatically reduce your cravings and stop overeating in 90 days or less, please visit DefeatYourCravingsCoaching.com. That's DefeatYourCravingsCoaching.com. Thanks.